here with Aiden still, um, sharing some insights into into what, how his hobby and and so on. Um, and yeah, I know you're quite a bit of a painter, so maybe this is going to be a, a painting one for you. But um, Aiden, what's your top hobby? Can you give us your top hobby tips? Um, I think for that's that's quite tricky. I obviously I've heard this question before, but like I, I did try and think about this beforehand. But then I also felt oh, like, well, such a long list. Such let's just do it live. Like, you know, it's fine. Um, so I, I think for me, it's just about motivation. Is that it used to be an idea that I would take that, oh, I can't paint unless I'm inspired by something or unless I, I feel like I should be painting. And now I've, I've just turned that around to like at least get something done every day. Mm -hmm. Like just, just even if you just sit down and maybe clip some bits of like not just for painting obviously but for a hobby in general like just do something like that's normally if i've sat down for 15 minutes and started on something i'll either continue with that or i'll get drawn into something else yeah. or i can just be happy that i did something yeah you know so i i also get into these like a bit of a funk about oh i don't want to do this particular thing but when you have tons of different projects like i'm sure something you could go oh well this main one that i've been trying to really slog through is is really boring so having something to distract yourself with in that case as well so i mean that's maybe like a double tip at the same time so like making sure to sit down and just do something but also having distractions the hobby distractions um, yeah. yeah yeah that was it half an hour a day or five minutes whatever however many just, minutes just any don't don't even constrain yourself to forcing to be half an hour or something just like if you can do something and you feel like you can just sit down and start something because it's always that point of pain right like to to get over the starting point even if that's something you do every day and you're just like i know when i sit down i'll really enjoy it but right now i'm sat scrolling on my phone and i kind of have gone into this like that mindset of just like, well, anything's effort, and so effort is bad. Yeah. Um, and remember that effort's not bad. You do this because you love it, and just try something. Yeah. I think yeah, I'm yeah. lucky enough to have a semi-permanent um, painting area as well. I well, yeah. I mean, I, I'm very lucky in that regard. But recently, um, both you and I have been trying to make it a nicer house to live in, and so it even to the point where you know having well actually that's another good good point another tip is just trying not to get into habits of leaving stuff everywhere like so it, it's very tricky if you have a permanent painting place um triple p nice alliteration there um but uh yeah so if just putting things back so now i've got uh the wet palette it's always just put the paint on the palette put it straight back in the rack yeah otherwise i find i i tend to just fill my painting area with ephemera and bits and just like it gets ridiculous and then that means you can't put it away and yeah. then it's like that extra effort so just trying to yeah trying to make sure you're doing something try and keep your area clean because otherwise it's more effort and more of a pain point to start stuff and yeah. try and have a distraction that is something else that is hobby based that is maybe not the huge projects you have on the go I think I think I definitely read that. I'm, I'm stealing this a bit from um, the independent characters, and they, they on their podcast they talk about um, resetting the mechanism, mm. and that's where you take your hobby area and you clean it back down. So it's a it's a clean area to work in. It's not yeah. previous projects. Your paints are in the right place. <clears throat> I'm sure you've never done this, Aiden. I've done it. <laughs> I've done well, it you, many times. The one to say um, when you you're going to do you're doing something, you, you need a particular paint. You've got a yellow next to you. It's not the right yellow. Or it's the metallic. But it's not the right metallic. It's not the right brown. Mm -hmm. But the other brown's over there. So I'll just use what's on my table. And I find I, I have these set paints that I always end up using because I don't want to yeah. get up and go to the cupboard, open the cupboard, get the box of paints out. Look sure. for the, it's a pain. Yeah. So, obviously, that's like a, a point of great privilege from my side is that I have everything I need is within arm's reach. And then you go like this. Yeah. That's literally it. And okay, so those racks have got out of chroma consistency, but uh, it's still, I know, right? <laughs> Chuck, can, um, Gary, can you put the shocked emoji in here? Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, I think it's just because I've got too many paints now. And that's actually a thing. I, I need to start slimming down again because the amount of, of differences you can make by mixing 
it's just having a consistent starting point and then you can go from there. Yeah. You don't need so many consistent starting points as far as I can see. Like the thing is, Aiden, I love buying paint. I mean, yeah, me too. I've got some amazing <laughs> like I bought um Andy Rue said to get um that periscope blue. Oh yeah, yeah. That's coming in the post. I've ordered that and I got oh, amazing. lovely I... um tealy, sagey, bluey green coming. And I was like, Oh, that's really nice. I'm gonna get that. Okay, nice. That, that sounds awesome. I, 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 did, uh, I my nails, then I would yeah. have so many nail varnish colours. <laughs> yeah, no, of course. Sorry. Um, Sorry yeah. no, I'm totally taking you off track here. It's fine. It's my fault. No, no, no. It's, I just need to drink. That's <laughs> I mean, don't we all? We're in lockdown. Yeah, obviously. The hour starts at nine o'clock. I just just need um, that. Uh, don't drink, don't over drink in lockdown, everyone. This is a no, I know. I, I no, literally have not been. been. <laughs> I'm an alcoholic during lockdown. I, I just really, um, sorry, we're just talking over each other like terrible people now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've become really like uh, no notice how much I need to drink like water these days. Is yeah. I basically like constantly hydrating, and it's been interesting. Obviously, now doing this interview, and we're doing many more uh, meetings from work of just how much it helps. Like, you know, because I'm just talking. talking. You need to drink if you're talking all day. Yeah. Um, yeah. I did have something about paints, but it's gone considered like, completely out of my mind. Oh, yeah. I, I went and bought just a bunch of different greens a while ago. It's like I realized like, I, I was just missing a huge chunk of, of greens in my life. And now I have some beautiful scale 75, like some scale 75. I keep going like, I want to start because I've got the flesh set and they're really yeah. good. They're really matte as mm -hmm. well. Because, um, I find a lot of the paints I just and I use washes as well, but um, uh, I get they're quite shiny. Yeah. Use a scale, you're like, oh, all these years I didn't realize how shiny my models were till I use scale seventy five. They're so matte. I I mix it up because obviously that that does give you a really matte starting place, but you can add inks into them to bring like more of a glossy effect. You can right. you can play with finish a lot without necessarily having to varnish something. Yeah, like even if even with a matte uh, paint, mm -hmm. the more you work it with a brush, the flatter the particles become, and so you will get more of a a, a reflective. So not I'm not saying like a pure gloss surface, but like you will get it would be more obvious. So um, I meant to ask Andy this, and I didn't ask him this, but maybe you can explain to me um, what the difference is between an ink and a wash. Uh, that's a good question. Um, no. <laughs> there we have it folks uh, <laughs> no so I, like, what I believe I don't use washes anymore I just use inks and I was like oh, oh fair enough and then afterwards I was like so I think inks are more pure pigment um, and I believe the washes are dilute pigment with extra like medium mm -hmm. so, so there's more of a binder there it can be more fluid but I guess it also depends on what kind of pigment it uses and everything else, because you can make a wash from a paint or you can yeah. have like the GW style washes or army paint and stuff, yeah. which is they're far more transparent and glossy anyway, even without using like the, the gloss. So inks and um, there's more particles, so they're less I believe so. They always seem to be far more vibrant. It's more about like having that, uh, it's not just vibrancy, it's uh, saturation as well. They're normally like super saturated pigments. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. It's, I, I couldn't tell you the exact reasoning, but that's just my, from my observations. Yeah. Still not really a proper answer, but it, it's, it's as close as I can get to one right now. That's, that's, that's an answer. I love it. Um, Aiden. Yes, I'm. Best hobby tool. Best hobby tool. That's, I think it's probably got to be my airbrush. Yeah. I, it, it's, I'm not someone who's like a massive airbrush evangelist, um, yeah. but it is just another, another really good tool that you can have and it can help in very different ways. Mm -hmm. And like just from ease of, I mean, I have come around to using some kind of xenophil highlighting on everything I do. And yeah. that makes it super easy because, I mean, it doesn't have to be, your classic like top down you can choose obviously where your light source is going all this kind of stuff but for me just to get that even like consistent thing that you can't necessarily get without massive amounts of practice and do it with the brush 
like because you're more when i when i use a brush to do something i'm more like thinking about the volumes and like the yep. individual parts of the model and i find it more difficult to just go yeah. right lights coming in from here so do it with a brush like this um so i do my i do zenithal highlighting with rattle cans so i undercoat them yeah. black and i get the colored undercoat and i go right where we're we going to do this from yeah and that really then, helps. So they, and then and then I pick the model up when it's dry and I look and I go, like, oh, I would never have realized that that little bump of the arm would have been caught by the light. I would never have realized and I would never have. And I'm, I, I, I find there are bits that I would never have thought to pick out for for light. Sure. Because I'm not thinking about coming over the shoulder between the gun or something. And it's just a little bit. And it's just when you actually use a, a spray to get the light, that zenithal. Yeah, because you you when you're working with a spray, you're working with like a 2D plane. Yeah. So literally it's just going straight onto whatever it is and, and it will show you more. And I, I mean, I'm still not great when it comes to, so doing the, the original like shading is, is excellent. But when I come to try and put like the glazes, I've had continual problems with like the consistency of how thin my glazes should be over the top of what I'm doing. And so a lot of the times I'll end up like just completely washing out that previous stuff. But even then, even if it's even if you're not using it to affect what's going down on top of it, yes, it gives you a great idea of just being able to look at that model instantly and go like, okay, so these bits should be lighter, or this is like, it's just a really nice visual aid at that point. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I would I wish that I could do better and to do to do more interesting stuff like you've seen. Obviously, like the uh, Donna Howe stuff, where she saw these amazing blends that go through, like these beautiful different color choices and all that kind of stuff. And I've never really played around with that, so I think maybe soon maybe. I should do something like yeah. Give it a go. Like, I pick, as I said, I've been picking models recently to do as like more like studies than than actually like, as a force. Just like take something interesting and make it look good, but using a different technique. So yeah, maybe I should do that and play around with my airbrush more and just. Just, just be fearless. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a very important rule for all of this hobby stuff. Is that when it comes down to it, if it, if you really don't like it, then you can redo it, but yeah. you shouldn't do. Like you should just go use that as a, a point from like, yeah, I've got this, I did this. Next time it will be better. Next time I yeah. do something different. This is where I've started from. The next one's going to be better. So, yeah, you know, work up from there. Uh, nearly everyone, apart from maybe Mira, has, has said that airbrushes are their best hobby tool that they have. Um, and so I wonder if you can maybe give us a bit more insight into um, why they're so good, but maybe give us some tips for someone that's thinking of starting out. I think Andy yeah, said so, 200 pounds on a compressor. And a, I mean, like, this, this is the thing. In a way, it's like an insane extravagance, like yeah. in one way. Um, but I just think that for what you're saying, I mean, like best hobby tool is literally, it, it's more of a tool to me than the rest of the things I have. Yeah. And I don't, necessarily think that I'm, I'm probably the most qualified to give give tips on stuff but because I use it in a very simplistic manner like really when it comes down to it I, as I said before I don't do like these incredible color blends or anything like that like you'd be much better off talking to Henry or, or someone you know or Andy or you know other people who are much more into that kind of stuff yeah. but for me it's just like it gets something done very quickly and I haven't used it from more of an artistic standpoint like my other thought was just like, I have some really nice brushes, but like that is less evocative of a tool in my mind. Yeah, um, it's a tool. It yeah, no, of course, but like that that seems, I think it's just the mechanical nature of it that really sort of brings that to the forefront in my mind. But as you say, like there is a big starting cost like around these things. But when you weigh that off against like how much we spend in our hobbies anyway, and things can get a bit ludicrous. I mean, looking at, at my having like gone back through uh, a bunch of my stuff that I'm looking to sell yeah, and just realizing like, oh God, like how, <laughs> how did we get to this point? Like, you know, so uh, when you look at the grand scheme of things, it, it's not like a huge outlay, especially if from a starting standpoint, if you, I would say even, I know Andy was saying about getting like a half decent brush to start with, but I didn't. I, I just got like one of these cheap compressor sets that have mm -hmm. like three airbrushes with them. And like bashed out some ideas with that before I ended up like properly investing. Um, and then when 
I just was unlucky with my original one. I know people have had the like the eBay sales and they've they've lasted them for years, but mine kind of crapped out after about a year. And so then at that point, because I knew I was already invested in using it, yeah, I'd already bought like a nicer airbrush. It wasn't like a super high end one or anything, but uh, it was better. And then from there, like my family, like obviously understood how much it meant to me, and they they actually invested in a really nice compressor for me. Um, but yeah, no, other than that, it, it's difficult because I want to, if someone's interested in it, I will talk to them about it and, and kind of give them advice on things. But there is always that idea that it, it's a big outlay. You know, it's it, it's something that you should be interested in. And as I said, before the lockdown, I was constantly saying, because I'm quite a, a bit of a hermit sometimes, and I like people to come over here and, and like see me because I just, I'm not good at walking around outside sometimes. Um, so, yeah, and that that just, I've always said, like, if someone's really interested, you know, pre this situation, I'm happy for people to come around and have a try on the airbrush and, like, see if it gets them. But, there, um, if you want to get together in a group of maybe 30 or, 30, 30 or 40 and come around to Aiden's house. Yeah, yeah, perfect. <laughs> you, De definitely. Like it, you have to wear a mask when you're airbrushing, so that'd be fine. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? It's, uh, <laughs> but no, it, it's, it's tricky because I use it in a very specific way and i'm still learning like massively especially when it comes to color application and all this kind of stuff mm -hmm. um but no it's just an interesting way of doing things it's just different when it comes down to it it's not any better or worse it's just another skill set yeah you know that's it yeah yeah that was quite long-winded and intense but... no I, I thought it was really good it's really good and um if you have any questions about airbrushing please feel free to contact aiden or uh subscribe and comment below <laughs> I mean, you're really like getting that in this time. It seems to have ramped up every time. And uh, catchphrase, it's just, it's just a bit of fun. Yeah, no, I, I realise this. <laughs> Ciao. Uh, we um, have, we do have sets of merch though, surely. <laughs> Monk, um, <laughs> you get on it and get the merch sorted out. I think we're gonna need a, a hate cast um, uh, airbrush, the mount airbrush tool. <laughs> Uh, that would be horrible. I don't really want to see the metrics behind what we do. <laughs> don't, don't, don't peer behind the curtain. It's never a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Um, what are we up to? Oh, yes. Uh, motivational tips, which we've kind of covered already. But um, yeah. Uh, again, how, would, how do you stay motivated? <clears throat> Is it just. Um, so I just think, yeah, I mean, I'm coming more and more around to just just do stuff. But also, I find like inspiration to stay motivated in, in many things. Like, I, I'm currently looking at my laptop and I'm noticing that a difference in reflections on the, the brush steel and everything else, and just going, oh, that can be quite interesting and trying to do that effect. But it's, it depends where you get things. Your motivation can come from anywhere, um, but it's a good thing to try and, and foster it and grow yeah. it as well. Um, not just have that as an idea of like, oh, I've got this huge force to paint. Like, what can I do? Is like each model you pick up, even in like the most ridiculously monotone Space Marine force, you can find a way to like make things interesting. Every model you pick up is is like a new start. Yeah. No, so if you're trying to gain some level of consistency, obviously, you know, you're doing a specific thing. But even within that. Each time you pick up a model, it's going to be different to the last one, no matter how much hard you try. Um, and so just kind of embrace it a little bit and remember that each point is uh, is like a chance for learning. Yeah. And I, you know, obviously from my background, I've, I've always been massively into learning. Um, and that's just something we have to do as humans as we carry on. So why not embrace it and really yeah. sort of double down on the fact that every chance is, is, a, is a learning opportunity. Yeah, you get a lot of a uh, uh, lot of joy from learning. I think if you, yeah, cause you you learn something and you and you can and you do it. And you're like, and you get I get a lot of happiness. I try some uh, new technique and it and it works out really well. I'm like, yes, it's something new that I've learned. I can hopefully get a bit better at it. Yeah, exactly. Um, Aiden, mm -hmm. tell me about your favourite game, um, mind games. <laughs> Not just mind games, then. Game of life, Monopoly. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> I know, right? 
How dare you William, in I here? Just, have, have, just wrote, um, my son turned and said to me, I was like, oh, can we play Monopoly, Daddy? And I'm like, no. <laughs> it's not, I, don't, I do not want to have an argument with, with my family. Right. So. I'm going to teach you how to play a good game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to play Monopoly with you. I'm sorry. <laughs> to apologise. Um, yeah, no, that's going to be a difficult difficult time in Charles' life. I mean, you, you just can't teach them. This is, this is Monopoly. It's not a good game. I just, I still, I simultaneously find it hilarious and massively disparaging. The fact that Monopoly in the original idea was was created as like a satire on capitalism in the forefront. And now it's been brought on as like, it's been so monetized in like this insane way. And like being, this is like a capitalist ideal. And so yeah. we've got this, this really boring set of mechanics that we can reskin in any kind of way and sell it and always make money off it. Um, yeah. yeah. Anyway, my favorite game, I think, probably is uh, it's got to be Infinity. Like, I don't know, like, I know it's shocker. Uh, I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm kind of like letting loose all of my GW stuff at the moment. Like, I can't, yeah. it's too much effort. Like to for me now, it, the one of the reasons I love Infinity so much is that it's so small form factor. Like I've got a quarter size KR case that fits everything I need for a game in. Yeah, I can easily take that to work on a thing. It's not before like when I was doing like a big heresy game, only like three or four KR cases. Yeah, and I I don't have a car. Like yeah. you know, it's not like it can just be easy to kind this thing around. Um, but. Yeah, no, it, it's for me. It's just been the like the level of player engagement. I'm sure you've probably heard this before. Of that, it it is kind of in a way exhausting. Go on, turn. Yeah, exactly that that kind of idea. Um, but for me, it's just very cinematic. I mean, as I said, like I get into all of these things from uh, an aesthetics choice. And okay, yeah, sometimes the terrain can look a bit boxy, but you know, you can do things to get around that. You can bring I in think we have some terrain. of the best terrain. Oh yeah. yeah. It looks amazing. I think we're very so lucky to have that terrain club. I mean, uh, I think I went to Sasha last uh, last interview about how great the terrain we have is at the yeah, club. Of course, stuff is it's really been growing actually as the player base has been growing at the club. It's been really incredible. Um, I mean, obviously, like we've had particular moments. So uh, Gary's work for like all the like everything he does. Like, yeah. and then obviously between him and Sasha creating all these beautiful things, like the this, the fancy boards that Sasha has been creating recently have yeah. been absolutely insane. Um, I can't wait for the uh, the Rainbow Road. Oh, one. Be that so one is, uh, yeah, I, I'm so looking forward to that. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it's it's interesting, though, especially like when we first started playing Infinity, we didn't we only had like little cardboard sets that come with the game itself. And we started just rummaging around and trying to find ways of making it work. And yeah. the tables we had then, like, whilst not good game tables, like, they they were awesome. We'd make it really, like, this was a real place, you know? So we had, like, cliffs with little gantries and all that kind of stuff. And it was it was terrible to play Infinity because there were, like, holes everywhere. Yeah. Uh, like, that, it just really, like, sparked. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, but no, so I can't even remember what the original question was now because I've just gone off into my own little world of beautiful terrain pieces. And but it was, um, why is terrain beautiful and why do you love it? Uh, oh, okay, perfect. Uh, so I'm absolutely was, Tell me about your favorite game. You were telling me about Infinity and why you love oh, it. Oh, yeah. No, of course. Is it true? Um, is it true? Some people are saying that um, Infinity is the CrossFit of wargaming. Is that true? <laughs> See, I, I really have no idea. And I think that's just like a. a terrible piece of bait that someone's thrown out into the ether but um it's terrible <laughs> also i don't really have a large understanding of what crossfit is apart from being something that a lot of people look down on so um I, from that standard then i think maybe they just don't understand infinity that much well, which is easy not to understand because it has a ridiculous learning curve but uh it's new um infinity light yeah, I, I haven't really had a proper sit down. This is the thing is that I'm sure a lot of people find is that I'm very enthusiastic about things, but I have not really sat down. Like I know a bunch of people in the Infinity group have been really heavily analyzing the new rule set and how that differs and all these kind of stuff. And it's just like, I'll pick it up and I'll play it and I'll enjoy it. Yeah, but 
I'm not there to try and like find like all these different interactions or anything. When they come up, that's fine. Like I, I'm just not there. That I, I don't really care that much. Like, I'm sorry. It's a, it's a beautiful game and I love it, but yeah. I'm I'm not going to spend my time kind of like shooting it down and ripping it apart. It's yeah. just, as long as the rules are there or understandable. And the main thing for me is that it just fits into that being more. It, it for me it's more cinematic because you have fewer things and you you're more in the the moment yeah. with each passing like move and order and everything else that you do um you know there have been amazing points where you know i've had some like robot uh heavy infantry jump up onto a building and like uh you know in my mind this ridiculous like john woo backflip style is like slow motion shooting and the the, the doves fly up and the, the you know the <laughs> all these like oh. really classic like uh hong kong action film tropes and uh yeah, yeah that that's what kind of does it for me and yeah, the, me the mechanics are great and that's it it's it's yeah i think that that's probably my reason why i find it is my favorite game do you like the mechanics of the game itself <laughs> well the, the mechanics are fine but it's everything that goes around it like the I, I just think in comparison to the very much you like you go i go here's a ton of dice situation from 40 yeah I, I i yeah i that's something that i have like, um less enchanted i mean i you know i play a lot of bolt action yeah of course and that's got an awesome idea like the I, whole <laughs> random choice of like know, and then you draw a dice and you're like okay i don't know if i'm gonna get to go next yeah which one do i want to activate and that can sometimes that can be really that like, it can be so important who gets the next dice well i think that's that's something that i find i, I mean i've only played bolt action once mm -hmm. but obviously having seen people play it as well is that that works really well because it's a simple rule system mm -hmm. right like in general but that yeah. the the added randomness of having the who's going to go situation because obviously infinity is still you have your active and your reactive turns yes yeah. so you know it's always going to be right they have their active turn you have your active turn yeah whereas yeah. in that i think the beauty in bolt action is the fact that the random choice of who is actually going to do the next thing is really like solidified by the fact that the rules are simple because otherwise if you had to have that level of tactical flexibility on top of really complex rules yeah that would just not work like yeah and um something i think that's overlooked and i've mentioned it before i think someone else talked about um bot action and i mentioned it before what something that's sort of um, missed is that it's really good the, the dice mechanic is the most obvious thing about the game yeah, but having the way the pin systems works um, for slow, it represents slowly eroding the morale of the unit. Yeah. Um, so it's not, just, it's, not, it's not zero sum. You know, it's it, your morale gradually deteriorates until you either you, you regroup and you you're fine, or you run away. So you become you become less effective. Yeah. gradually as your morale eventually drops off, <laughs> um, which is you know I think is more realistic. And it yeah, is like, no, I'm insanely brave. Oh, I'm gone. You know. Yeah, it, it's it's just that that thing of like you don't have. It's not the classic 40k thing where you're just like wiping units off the table. You know, it's like you do enough to affect that unit enough for so either it will stay there, but the amount of output that it can give is not going to be enough to worry you, yeah. or they'll run away, or you know. Like there is definitely, I I think it would be great to have a like a go. I know you've got a couple of forces now, right? So, couple. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> in you know, <laughs> three German me. armies. Last time I checked. So. Okay. Um, ah, yeah, I've so gone. that'd be awesome to play again and just have like a, a, a better understanding. But yeah, no, I, I just really like the player engagement side of Infinity. Yeah. Like, so yeah, let's say anything else you want to say about Infinity. Um, it's great, and you should try it. Yeah, I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. <laughs> I, I meant it's like because it looks nice as well. Like, it, I can, the it, models it is look beautiful. Cool. <clears throat> um, something that you don't, you don't have to like all of them. There's some models I don't like. Oh yeah, just like anything that's pre CAD, just throw it out. <laughs> no, there are some there are some nice sculpts, but the the difficulty of building the older sculpts is is a level of infuriation that I just can't deal with anymore. If I, I think I put on the post I put on the Infinity Group that I was assembling some models, and if I want to put one shoulder, 
where you know where roughly where a humanoid shoulder should be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> then put the other shoulder on to hold the gun. There's no way I could put that shoulder. Yeah, there's those aren't human things. <laughs> yeah, like his torso is not wide enough or something. It's like I don't know. So I, don't know, so I, just, I just basically put them on. So n- neither of the shoulders are right. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. Just... <clears throat> and I don't. I don't. Um, this might be controversial, but I don't care for the cutesy robots. It's fine. Not my thing. I'm like cutesy robots. I'm like. Nah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely a choice, right? Like. Yeah. I don't know. Anything yeah. about that. So you know, if you like cutesy robots, yeah. I mean, I was originally gonna like for a bunch of my cutesy small robot situation. I was gonna convert my own, but then Lane did some amazing conversions, and uh, basically, I just decided after that point, oh, I'll just try and paint the ones that exist already, because I, I felt that any of my previous ideas were far too close to the, her ideas she'd already made, um, yeah. and. Uh, but they're amazing, and there is still like right. converted models of some of the best. Yeah, exactly. And this the thing is, is that um, there is still that idea that I, I've, I've been trying to convert one of the bigger robots for a while, and it's difficult. I mean, I had to learn how to use a jewelry saw and stuff, and really get into it. There is still, if you're crazy enough, <laughs> like yeah. There's, I mean, I, I. I've been playing with models for a while now, and I was like, oh, metal's the best. I like metal models, not these new plastic ones. And then you start doing some conversion on a metal one, you're like, oh, my God. Yeah. Give me the plastic ones. No, exactly. For that case, like, it's literally still sat on the side. Anyway, I think we've digressed quite heavily at this point. We have. Um, What game do you fancy playing in the future? I'm going to guess, I'm going to read your mind now. Bushido. <laughs> hmm. I wonder where that's come from. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Um, well, yeah, I guess so. Like, you and I have been trying to get the rules sorted, but having spoken to, to Chris, who seems to be our general Bushido guru at this point, um, he's constantly saying that the, the book is, the rules are there, but they're a small company and they, it's just not very well formatted. It's quite difficult to read from a beginner's perspective. Yeah. Um, and we've obviously been quite uh, quite privileged in uh, the Infinity rule set with the starter sets. They give you such a granular starting point of like, literally, this is how you do an order. Yeah. And so going into this, and it's quite verbose and it's a bit all over the place. So we started with one game where we stripped away like all of the character special rules and all this mm-hmm. kind of stuff. And and there was it was interesting and like it's a lot about positioning so it's a very small like two by two board and that means it's great for dining room table stuff and we're hoping that i think we could probably try a bit later i guess as well today um so we can get back at it but uh yeah no it seems very interesting but it's also you know being like a more infinity light kind of idea um it's I just, I, I just fell in love with Japan when I was a very young person. So it didn't, it's always been something that's been interested me. Yeah. And like, I think because re- the the ones I've painted so far have been like this very traditional samurai army. The work in the work like an army, you have like trained people, and then yeah. ones that work underneath them, and it's it's very classical hierarchy kind of idea. So I'm probably going to throw that away the second I've learned the rules. And uh, this is an optimal. <laughs> no, it's just like it sounds a bit boring. Like you've got very cool samurais that have big armor and hit something yeah. strong, but that's that's not really my interest. Maybe you want seven samurai. I mean, I can't understand why you want anything else. Yeah, no, I know. But there is this really awesome monk uh, faction, which is like um, elemental monk, faction all about monk. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah just a, just monk. Yes, <laughs> I brought a monk. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that, that should be cool. It's like uh, villages, like martial artist villages and fishermen and like monks uh, and some like benevolent Japanese demons, uh, which sounds really cool. I think that'd be awesome. I can't start another game. I know, I know, Andy. <laughs> but no, I, again, like... Oh, this sounds really good. Oh, that sound of this sound. No. I, don't know. No, I think we should definitely uh, we should play some ball action together uh, yeah. after this is all over. I, 
think you'll enjoy it. And uh, yeah, well, as I said, like I had a game with uh, with John um, uh, probably ages ago when when you guys were like first starting stuff up with Ball Action at the club, mm -hmm. and I was playing. I think it was his Finnish force. Yeah. Had the, yeah. Russians. Sorry. Is it Finnish versus versus Russians? Uh, I can't remember. I remember I had that like skidoo. That was the first day I played it as well. That was my first game with John, and he was I brought them down and was showing people how to play. Yeah, that no, was it was awesome. Fun. It was it was so enjoyable, and like everything fit. Like if you played games before, you just kind of already knew where to start, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um. Yeah, that was is this great, and so like Bushido at the moment is the opposite of that, but I still want to play it. That's fine. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you very much. So last last question of this section before we get to the big four mm -hmm. and the extra question from Sasha. What's your favourite club memory? <laughs> Sorry, that's such a bad <laughs> <laughs> question, like, isn't it? Because it's like every memory. <laughs> yeah, it's... it's, so it's what's, what's your favourite memory right now? And then, then later on, you remember so something even more amazing. This was one that I have had on the back burner for a while. <laughs> actually, is that whilst I, I mean, like so much of my last five years of my life have been based through the club. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, but I think the one thing that sticks out particularly in mind is like a singular moment um, was your birthday. Uh, oh, that was my 40th. Yeah, yeah. So that was great. Um, we had this huge uh, army, uh, was it? Armageddon game? It was uh, just orcs. Everyone brought orcs, orcs versus anything uh, else. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I remember like chopping a stomper in half with my Wraith Knight and then having it obliterated off the board. It was basically like if there was something that would work, it would do its thing and then it would disappear. Like that was like literally everything that happened. And then it was so good. It would spend like half the night with the orc side putting their army on the table. And then, <laughs> um, but to be honest, in, in the most like, I've never seen so many people put so many orcs on the table so quickly. Like, it was awesome. And then we just got to the point where we just, like, had enough of it. We just, like, pushing swathes of stuff. Put orcs and go like this. Like, not even, like, none of this, like, putting stuff out. Even, like, right, Guardian Squad, yeah, push it over there. Like, it's fine. <laughs> but, so those sticks they use in the war movies move the yeah, uh, units around. We right. should have had them. We should have really, like, yeah, that would have been amazing. Uh, proper, like, bomber command kind of style. But, I do remember. But um, now it may surprise you to learn, but I got a little tipsy. Never. And we called a while. And I remember, I don't, I don't remember. The next morning, I should say, this out, I woke up and the whole left side of my body, every single muscle was pulled and strained. And I was like, how did I manage to strain? So Can I tell them why? Body. <laughs> what I, I, we called a while. And I remember I picked Monk up and held him over the table. Now, <laughs> Monk is very sturdy. Like he's he's he is a sturdy man, and I think my body was like, "What the hell?" Luckily, I was powered by vitamin beer. Uh, so I picked it's him up. The fact that you picked him up, train every brandished him at us, and <laughs> screamed, <"Wah!" laughs> It was just like, yeah, that that was like the most singular memory of of anything. Oh, I'm a monkey, I'm only a monkey. Destroyed my body, but you know. It was worth it at the time. But yeah, I think like between that, that that's that's the one that sticks out of like purely about the club whilst literally in the club. Yeah. I had a good and who won? Everyone. Yeah. I stuff happens. Stuff we all, happened. We had a great time. It was it was good. There was cake. There was cake. <laughs> cake and booze. Good memory. Good memory. So um, we're gonna take a break now. And we're going to come back and ask the big questions that everyone needs to know the answers to.